Okay, I've got another video here with some new content for Enscape. You can see here I've laid out all of the existing Enscape content in a sort of 3D file. Uh, I've tried to organize these into some kind of uh, standard organization. And if we have a look in Enscape, you can see I've kind of put uh, all the autumn trees together and then I've sort of clumped general deciduous elms and that kind of thing together, uh, all the conifers, spruces together. Um, these are sort of the generic ones that are just called tree 1 through to 18. Uh, I've put all the palms in a, in a row so you can sort of find what you want quickly and easily in those. Uh, all the potted plants and bushes together and the hedge elements together. Uh, I will say I haven't made any new families for the stones because I don't really use them or care about them. Uh, so feel free to do that yourself. The new content that I've made, if we go back to Revit here, um, looks relatively simple by comparison. So I've gone and placed a new version of my family in front of all the Enscape ones uh, and made them sort of match as far as height. Uh, height and shape. So here's in section you can see this is my new family and that is the Enscape asset in the background. Now these families have a few uh, parametric capabilities. Essentially I can change the height and width of the bubble section at the top and then the percentage that the trunk is of the overall height. So if we just modify this one for the sake of argument, you see this is the plan symbol. This is also how big this symbol in your plan view will appear. Uh, currently, this one is 100% the height. So if this is 6 meters high, it's going to be 6 meters wide. Um, if I make that 50%, you'll see 6 meter high tree will be 3 meters wide in plan. Uh, now I have left this as an instance parameter because personally I like to have um, in my plan views where I'm laying out my trees some slight variation in the way those uh, graphic display uh, looks. It just looks a bit more realistic if you, uh, or just looks a bit better if you have a few uh, rotational changes and size variations in the way they look. Uh, but you know because the Enscape asset doesn't really change um, proportion. Uh, other than proportionally, uh, the default that they'll come in as will match the uh, the asset from Enscape anyway. So that's the um, the default plan symbol. Uh, so if you don't change those, it will always match what's in Enscape. Um, the trunk height I have set as a type parameter because generally that's pretty fixed for the type of tree. So something like a really tall pine will have quite a lot of trunk and a small amount of foliage at the top. Uh, where something like a willow will have a sort of stumpy uh, bit of trunk and then quite a big canopy. Um, but again, that's just set up as a percentage. It's set up as a percentage so that as you change the height, everything else changes proportionally with it. So if you change this to 15 meters, um, you'll see the, the trunk gets bigger. Everything just proportionally moves up and down rather than having to go in and change the height with trunk every time you want to rescale something. So you, you really only have to change one, uh, one parameter to get all this stuff to uh, update. Um, as far as how it looks in Enscape, Here's uh, my assets next to all of the Enscape assets, and you can see they effectively look exactly the same. There's a row of uh, my ones are here, and the Enscape ones are in front of it. Uh, and all I'm doing for that is using the same technique I have with the other content I've made, where the simple asset that I have has a parameter in it get that on screen, down the bottom here, which is the Enscape asset ID. It's really this um, keyword here that allows Enscape to swap out the family that you've put in the project for the um, proxy uh, element that's in their library, which is a poly mesh object with a you know detailed texture, etc. on it. There's also this 
Enscape native asset height um, and this essentially needs to be set as the default height of that asset in order to scale correctly which I've already built so you don't have to worry about that. There's a few other parameters in here like the uh, botanical name if you know that you can populate it and uh, the plant category I've created a few different categories just so it's easier to sort uh, what this content is uh, and then the materials that are in here are just what's going to be displayed in Revit in um, just in the general 3D view uh, yeah and here's where you would change that plan symbol representation if you want different representations uh, there if uh, for your specific plants now there's quite a few in there if your company only wants to have one particular plan representation for all of their trees in their projects instead of having sort of uh, a whole different range like uh, like this then they can uh, just d delete out the other ones and it will make the file even smaller um, so this is kind of the range of plan representations I've got sort of through one through to 17 I suppose so I think these are relatively good representations for the tree types um, there's a different group of plan symbols for the palms I think I've only got five of those six of those uh, and then they just sort of repeat going through uh, it's mostly because the palms tend to look quite different in plan than the, the rest of the trees there's uh, also the hedge family which currently has a bit of a uh, sort of foliage hedge pattern on there you can feel free to change that to whatever you want as well or get rid of it uh, it's up to you uh, for the potted plants I haven't made any special representations to show the pots because generally the foliage kind of covers the pot anyway it just didn't seem necessary okay so that is the way the families work you've got a um, I've gone through and matched the sort of size of them the default plan uh, the height the plan representation so that they all kind of match those Enscape assets uh, the main difference is this file with all just the Enscape assets loaded is about 80 meg uh, with just all of the um, all of my simple trees loaded it's only about 5 meg for the whole lot and that can be smaller if you get rid of all the variations in plan uh, assets as well so that should be nice lightweight simple um, another thing I'll mention is in general all of this kind of content so the people the trees cars all of that you should be putting all of that stuff on a separate work set that is not visible in all views by default and then just turn that uh, work set visibility on in the views where you want to have visualization uh, elements visible um, or landscaping plans that kind of thing it will keep your file um, running a lot more efficiently so this is the Enscape assets uh, one thing I will talk a little bit more about is this hedge family so what I've done here is created a family that uh, essentially a single family and in there there are there's four four different types here that all match the Enscape standard sort of module sizes that they've provided um, and then there's this last one which is set to hedge instance and so that last one the hedge instance family if we look at its properties there's just a tick box I've created in there called Enscape modular so when you untick that um, instead of sticking to the predefined module length parameter up here the length of it will be driven by the um, instance parameter for length um, and what I've done in Enscape there is just set up a, uh, a seamless material that comes through for that hedge and from a distance it looks pretty reasonable so uh, I mean up close you can see that the Enscape hedge is a lot more detailed and if you're going to be doing videos or something where you're in quite close to this hedge then I would use that content um, but if you're not all that close to it the um, the instance based hedge is going to be a lot more flexible to use uh, a lot a lot easier to to um, use in your project uh, and it's you know going to look pretty reasonable at a distance okay the last thing I wanted to talk about here is the um, the height parameter 
So all of the families I've made so far that I've shown you, if you click in here, the height is actually a type parameter. Um, the main reason for that is currently Enscape don't support this being an instance parameter. It won't actually scale the Enscape asset if you change it as an instance, it has to be a type. Um, where this is really annoying is I don't really want to have 10 different elm trees of you know all unique types just to have them in you know 10 different slight sizes uh, and generally what I'd like to do is something like this where if you're placing some plants you want to be able to you know change some rotation and you know modify the height so this one here this example I've made all of these the heights are all instance parameters so you can see here the height is an instance I made them you know slight variations of of the height um, however, when I go into Enscape and look at these, you can see that they're all just defaulting to the, the one height, which is the default native Enscape asset height. So you can see they're about the same size as this tree here. However, in Revit, they're actually about half that size. If I go and look at it in 3D, you'll get the same thing. So they actually should appear in Enscape of these sizes but it's currently not supporting if this is an instance parameter it won't scale the Enscape asset it has to be a type parameter so if you can do me a favor and please go to this website contact uh, Enscape support and ask them to rectify that so that all of my families work the way that I would like them to and I will amend the families and republish them for general use for everybody uh, other than that, please enjoy this content. Um, it will make your files a lot uh, smoother and faster and also won't leave that horrible poly mesh stuff visible in any of your views. Uh, thank you for watching.